What on earth is the point of procrastinating, arguing furiously about science and climate change, while we sail on in the Titanic? reality is that our planet has reached a point of crisis and we have only seven years before we lose the levers of control. But, you know, after this film, it was like, okay, you know, we thought he was goofy, but in actual fact, he was prescient and wise. You know, I think we thought, or at least I did when we started to work, we were making a kind of environmental movie. Right. But it's really a kind of a bigger thing. It is. And this sort of way of looking at the world and the, the issue about it's really something about, you know, Janine Benny says it very beautiful, this is about a change of heart. It's, it's and, very spiritual. And he is very spiritual. Right. Thank you for the film, it's very powerful and feel honored to, uh, to uh, uh, view it as the rest of the audience here in Aspen. My question is, what would it take to get this film into every high school in the United States, Europe, Asia. Kädet nousevat hurmoksessa sarvipäätä symbolisoivaan saatanamerkkiin, asuja koristavat saatanalliset tunnukset, pentagrammit ja alaspäin käännetyt ristit. Paidat julistavat saatanan sanomaa ja pilkkaavat kristittyjä Jumalaa. Rooliasuihin kuuluu sadomasokistisia piikkipantoja, ketjuja sekä lävistyksiä. Kauhugalleria täydentävät lystikkäät vampyyrit ja pikkunoidat, vikkat. Saatana on vapaus. Saatana on anarkia. Saatana on vapaus ju Jumalan tyranniasta. Jumalan kontrolli. Saatana on ihmisen vapaus tehdä mitä ihminen haluaa. Ihmisen vapaus olla sitä mitä hän todella haluaa olla. Saatana symbolien kanssa juhlakenttää hallitsevat natsitunnukset. Ja jotta soppa olisi täydellinen, Sulassa sovussa näiden pahuuden palvelijoiden kanssa metallimusiikista nauttii sivareita, kasvissyöjiä ja muita ekoaktivisteja. Kun keskustelumme etenee, käy ilmi, että Pentti Linkolan maailmantuska sekä ekofasistiset ajatukset viehättävät tyttöjä. Niin mun mielestä toikin on liian paljon ihmisiä. Mun mielestä me jätään sama näkökulma. Mun mielestä ainakin ehkä 95 prosenttia ihmisten, siis koko maailman kansasta pitäisi... Tappaa. Ja maailma on myöskin olemaan yksi osa siitä. Jos, koska silloin maailmassa vain pari, vaikka ihmiset, luonto alkaisi ehkä mahdollisesti, jos se osa ihmisistä olisi yhtään järkeviä, luonto alkaisi ehkä elää uudestaan, alkaisi elättää tätä maailmaa, alkaisi olla niin kuin oma. Että me ollaan tavallaan osa. Klassinen humanismi lähtee ajatuksesta, että ihmisellä on itseisarvo, ihminen on kaikkein arvokkaan. Ja meillä mun mielestä ihmisellä ei ole oikeastaan mitään arvoa, koska ihminen ei ole tehnyt mitään hyvää tälle maailmalle. Ei, ei todeta mitään hyvää. Ihmisen ei, siis varsinkin kristinuskon tuon jälkeen, ihmisen ei ole mitään hyvää annettavaa tälle maailmalle, mutta se, että teollistua lisää nytään. Ei yksinkertaisesti mitään hyvää. Sen jälkeen on niin luonto hylätty täysin, ketään ei enää kiinnosta luonnon tilaa, kaikki vaan haluaa lisää rahaa, lisää rahaa, lisää rahaa, lisää kauniita vaatteita, viinaa, tupakkaa, kauniita naisia, kauniita miehiä, urheiluautoja, joka on täysin turhaa. Nahkapää Kai Kotamies antaa kannatuksensa Impeen Nazarinin kehotukselle tappaa heikot ja elinkertoimet. Se on ihan oikein. Ei heikkoja ja vammaisia ja semmoisia täällä tarvitaan.
world is in turmoil and falling apart in so many different ways, especially with ISIS, our president is worried about global warming. What a ridiculous situation. All right, that was Donald Trump calling out President Obama. It seems our commander in chief is more worried about the weather than he is about defeating radical Islamists. And that's not all. Is the Paris Climate Conference just a big waste of time and money? Well, a new documentary called Climate Hustle takes aim at many of the global warming alarmists and debunks much of their so called science. Here's a clip from the film. I call this sort of stuff kindergarten science. Climate has become a new religion and that people who disagree would be treated as heretics. I think they should be enjoying three hots and a cot at The Hague with all the other war criminals. We're not dealing with a scientific issue. We haven't been dealing with a scientific issue now for 15 years. We're dealing with a determined political issue. The polar bear is, it bears a disproportionate burden of the combustion profligacy. I was being insulted by people who knew far less about these things than I did. If IPCC is dogma, then count me in as a heretic. This estimate just crumbles when you touch it. Two days later, I was handed my walking papers from a 23-year association with that think tank. You can't use carbon dioxide to control the climate. So it's simply propaganda. you missed it, Prince Charles wants nothing less than to remake the world's economy. Everybody's terrified. They seem to think that suggesting that there's another way of looking at economics is somehow some kind of monstrous threat to capitalism itself. But if capitalism itself doesn't take into account natural capital, we're all stuffed. I mind about your children and grandchildren as mine. And I think we are failing miserably in our duty if we don't <laughs> take these matters very seriously indeed, because by God, their lives are going to be a misery. This is a call to revolution. The earth is under threat. It cannot cope with all that we demand of it. It is losing its balance, and we humans are causing this to happen. The Prince of Wales is a leader and a thought leader and has brought together people to think and then to act on issues that many others are not talking about. But, you know, after this film, it was like, okay, you know, we thought he was goofy, but in actual fact, he was prescient and wise. They said, we've never seen this guy. This guy's great. Like, we've, we've, we've been watching him on the news and we've been seeing him interviewed on the BBC and the they had way. never seen this, this person. And I think that's when Stuart and I kind of looked at each other and thought, well, we, we might be onto something here in terms of helping reveal this other persona who, who really is.
say this um, process has not exactly been helped by the corrosive effect on public opinion of those climate change skeptics who deny the vast body of scientific evidence that shows beyond any reasonable doubt that global warming has been exacerbated by human industrialized activity. Their suggestion that hundreds of scientists around the world and those who accept their dispassionate evidence, including presumably, ladies and gentlemen, myself, who uh, rather ironically am constantly accused of being anti-science, are somehow unconsciously biased, creates the implication that many of us are somehow secretly conspiring to undermine and deliberately destroy the entire market-based capitalist system which now dominates the world. So I would ask how these people are going to face their grandchildren and admit to them that they actually failed their future, that they ignored all the clear warning signs by passing them off as merely part of a cyclical process that had happened many times before and uh, was beyond our control, that they had refused to heed the desperate cries of those last remaining traditional societies throughout the world who warned consistently, consistently of catastrophe because they could read the signs of impending disintegration in the ever more violent extreme aberrations in the normally harmonious patterns of nature. So I wonder, will such people be held accountable at the end of the day for the absolute refusal to countenance a precautionary approach. For this plays, I would suggest, a most reckless game of roulette with the future inheritance of those who come after us. An inheritance, ladies and gentlemen, that will be shaped by what you decide to do here in this parliament. 